sexuality and eternal life and, and desire and all that and, and lust for life, all those things really get to the nitty gritty of what will cause people to start experiencing the fruit of the Spirit yeah. and then be set free from the, the fruit of the flesh. Yeah. Because I, I tell you what, um, it, it's, it's awesome to preach against the carnal mind in some areas, and it's true that the carnal mind come up with all these lies about God and about us and how we saw God and how we saw ourselves that really prevented us from being able to trust God and see ourselves right. And so it's beautiful to come in and talk about who we are to God and how we're accepted of God and adored of God and all those kinds of things. But if you sit in that place and say, I'm beautiful, I'm a child of God, I'm a treasure, he sees me as perfect and holy. If you sit in that place without understanding life and death, Yes. And immortality yes. and how um, the system in the world tries to communicate death and the impact that death has in the heart. You can actually sit in a place where you know you're a son, you know you're a daughter, you know God thinks you're full of glory and honor, you know God adores you. And you can actually sit in a place where you still find yourself in bondage to life through the flesh. Yeah. Because you don't understand the dynamic of death is what brings condemnation. Yes. Death brings condemnation. We weren't created for death, and we completely lost sight in the church world of the impact that death has on the soul of a human being, and then what it brings forth once it impacts the soul of a human being. And then we, we completely lose sight of the dynamic of that. That's why the law was called the ministration of death. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's, not that, it's not that it's just ministering that this will kill you. It's ministering what happens to you when death reigns over you. Mm -hmm. What happens to you. That's why it's also called the ministry of condemnation. <laughs> right? It's not the ministry of God condemning us or God did condemn us or God will condemn us. It's the ministry of trying to find life through the strength of the flesh will speak a word of condemnation to you that is death. <laughs> Right? Everywhere you look around you, you'll see death. And then that death wants to be ministered to your heart, telling you you're separated from life. You lack life. That's really the nitty gritty in the heart of a human being. Yeah. And that can filter over into identity. You could say, I lack a good report. And that would be a word of death. Mm -hmm. But you could, re you could come into the revelation that God got down on one knee and spoke words of adoration over you, and that he's only ever had good thoughts of you. If you don't understand the life or the quality of life that you've been made a partaker of in God, then death is still reigning in your heart. Oh, it may yes. not be reigning over you eternally, but it could still be bringing condemnation to your heart. If you don't ever understand that, yeah. you all your days be walking through life with a subverted soul, knowing you're beautiful to God, but still experiencing death in your soul. Right. And all the time wondering why. That's what Jonathan said in, on Sunday. Exactly the way he feels. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what will happen. And that's what happened to me. I'm sitting around and I, I realize, wait a second, I don't even consider the I don't even consider the fruit of my life anymore when I think of myself. Yeah. I'm I'm fully persuaded I'm a son. I'm fully persuaded God loves me. And yet there were still times where I could feel subverted in my soul. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what is this? You know? Yeah. And then it's like all oh, this revelation just came. Bam! And then you start seeing it all over in the scriptures. You know, and you start seeing desire and what desire is and how desire is good and how desire is then turned into lust. Like Cain. Cain desired to be exalted. Sure. That's not an evil desire. The problem is he lusted after being exalted through the flesh instead of committing his desire unto God and believing on that guy to exalt him, yeah. right? Yeah. So his desire to be exalted, which was God's desire. The only reason he could even desire to be exalted is because God first desired to exalt him more than he wanted to be exalted. <laughs> but because he took that desire and lusted after his desire through his own ability, that quickly turned into lust, him lusting after life. And then when his fruit wasn't accepted, that spoke death to him. Yes. Corruption, yes. condemnation. And then he lusted after life through the works of his own hands. And what did that result in him doing? <coughs> Envying Abel and then murdering Abel. Right. 